Hey everyone, it's Chris from HC Media. Making videos at home doesn't have to be a struggle. I'm working from home and making videos, and you can too. That's why I'm here to tell you about the official HC Media Stay at Home Programming Guide. These tips and this guide can help you keep your message going out to the community during this time of isolation. We want to encourage you to keep putting your voice out there and let us help you do it. Here's how you can create a video at home and get it into our hands. The first thing you're gonna need is a Google account. Lucky for you, this is free and easy. Just simply go to Google on your internet browser, sign up if you haven't already, and create an account. The next step is really easy, it's making your show, and as a producer, you should already be really good at this. But here's a few tips from doing it at home, because it's gonna be a lot different than doing it at the studio. First, you're gonna need a camera, so take your digital camera or your smartphone and set it up on a stabilized surface or use a tripod. If you're using a smartphone, make sure you absolutely turn your phone horizontally while you're filming. You'll notice that I don't have the best setup here because I'm at my apartment. I have some shadows and some crazy lighting going on, but that's okay. The most important part of your piece is your audio. Now, if you have a microphone, definitely plug it into your camera and use it. If you don't, try to get as close as you can to your camera without making your face look too big to try and get the best quality audio when you record. The good news is if you have a smartphone, a lot of headphones that came with your phone have a built-in mic. So when you plug the headphones into your phone, it should have no trouble picking up your voice naturally. Your setup doesn't have to be pretty, we just have to be able to see you. So, the first thing is, unless you're sitting in front of a window that has its curtains or blinds closed like I do, don't position yourself with a window behind you, unless you're trying to conceal your identity, of course. The ideal position for the camera would be in front of a window so that it's behind the camera, allowing the natural light from the window to light your face. In this time of social distancing, you're gonna probably not have any guests on your show. So when you're talking to your audience, you wanna make sure that you're looking directly into the camera lens, not at the camera's monitor or another screen or somewhere off to the side. If you need to look at your script or your outline, that's fine. You can totally do that and glance back and forth. But just make sure you're looking into the camera and you're addressing the audience directly. Also make sure to speak a little bit slower and articulate and just be a little more clear than you normally would if you're talking to people in person. If your program's only gonna go 15 minutes, don't feel like you have to stretch it to 30 minutes. Whatever time length you have is totally fine. The reason is because when you later upload this to Google Drive, you're gonna be limited to the amount of space you have as a free user. Anything that goes beyond 15 gigabytes is not gonna let you do it unless you pay for more space. So most videos should be somewhere between three and seven gigabytes as long as they're you know, relatively short. Do your best to have a prepared script or outline handy so that you can refer to it as you're filming. And don't be worried about glancing over to a computer screen or a notepad during your filming. Now, once you've completed your video, you're ready to get it onto your computer for the next step. You can get your file from your camera to your computer in a variety of ways. It's gonna depend heavily though on what device you use, whether it was your phone or a digital camera or something else. They're all gonna have different wires or connections or ways you can do that. So do the best one that works for you. Uh, there's lots of resources online that can help you if you have a specific wire or camera. Definitely give that a quick search and see how you can get your file from your camera to your computer. Once your file is on your computer, you're ready for the final step. Now, from your newly created Google account, you're gonna go up in the top right-hand corner of the main Google page, and you're gonna click on this square collection of dots. This is a menu. I know, kind of strange looking, but once you click that, you're gonna get a variety of different options. You're looking for the one called Drive. Drive is a yellow, green, and blue triangular icon. Go ahead and click Drive. It's gonna open a new window. Now, once you have this new window open, there's gonna be a lot of things on here that's gonna be very confusing, but what you're looking for in the top left-hand corner is a button called New. Once you click New, you're then gonna click on File Upload. Once you click File Upload, your computer is then gonna pop up a screen where you're gonna to have to find the file you just uploaded. So you're gonna be looking for your completed show. Click on your completed show, but then you're gonna take that, just click on it, you're gonna either click OK if you're on a PC or you're gonna click Open if you're on a Mac, and then the file will begin uploading to your Google Drive. 
Now, depending on lots of factors like length of video or size of file, this process could take a while. Google Drive will show you a progress bar showing how long or roughly it will take to upload your file. You can definitely walk away, feel free to go have lunch or watch TV while your file uploads. Just as long as you don't close that internet tab, you should be fine. Once your file has finished uploading, you're gonna go ahead and right click on the file and click share. A new box window is gonna pop up where you're gonna have an email and some notes. You don't wanna put your email in here, you're gonna put our email. So in the email box, go ahead and type info at haverillcommunitytv.org. Now in the notes section, what we ask you to do is put your full name, your phone number, the title of your show, the length of the show, and any other notes you think we might need to know about the program, whether it's you know where there's certain edits or certain things you want taken out, or maybe you wanna just give a quick description about your show so we can put it on our website, definitely put that in the notes and let us know and we'll be sure to check it out. Once you've put in our email and you've put in your notes, go ahead and click done. The show will be shared with us, we'll get a notification about it, and we'll be sure to download it and review it. Now all programs will be cleared and reviewed by us on staff and just make sure that you are following the same guidelines you would in the studio. So the big one is no call to action, no selling stuff. Uh, anything that includes call to action will be edited out or perhaps sent back to you for a reshoot or a re-edit. So just make sure you're doing your part and having no call to action in your videos. We really hope that you'll take advantage of this stay at home programming guide. We put this together because we want you to be encouraged during this time of isolation and we want you to continue putting your message out there to the community because it's probably a time where we all need a little bit of normalcy in our lives. So hopefully you'll take advantage of this. If you have any questions at all, if you need anything explained to you, you can email myself at C Bowden, B O W D E N, at HaverillCommunityTV.org, or you can also email Lindsay at L Paris at HaverillCommunityTV.org. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope you'll take advantage of this stay at home programming guide.